work out the finer details as we go along, okay? And that's how Jesus did it as well. He taught issues as they arose and he didn't, he didn't explain everything all at once. He didn't educate people past their level of obedience. All right? And that's a big trouble for us today, all right? Because we've got all this information. Information, 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 information. And it's it actually risky because it, it cultivates disobedience. We've got all this information and we don't know what to do with it. How can we? We've, we've, been, we've been overwhelmed, right? So everything seems more complex than it is. And it looks way more difficult than it is. And it becomes daunting, daunting, all right? And we don't know where to start. So we put it in the too hard basket. But thankfully, Jesus gives, us, gives it to us big picture style. All right. So Mark, so yeah, so I'll tell you, today we're talking about three great commands. <clears throat> in Mark 12.30, Jesus gives us the greatest commandment. And he says, so one of the teachers of the, of the religious law saw them standing. Religious law was standing there listening to the debate. Can you see that? Yeah. He realized that Jesus had answered well, so he asked, of all the commandments, where am I? Yeah, which is the most important? Jesus replied, the most important commandment is this. Listen, O Israel, the Lord our God is the one and the only Lord, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. That's a big call, eh? The second, though, is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. No other commandment is greater than these. Love God and love people. So when Jesus is asked, what is the greatest commandment? He says, love God. He says, your love for God is the most important thing. But then he continues straight away by saying that you're loving your neighbor as yourself is also the most important thing, eh? So they're the same. They're two sides of the same coin. And your love for God will be expressed by your love for people. So Jesus is saying that these two commands are the essence of what it's all about while we're here, okay? Um, we've got to ask ourselves, what does Jesus mean by love, all right? Because love's an unclear word in English. See, I can love my missus, but I can also love Pepsi Max, mate. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> And Pepsi Max is a good drink. <laughs> it's got zero the sugar and all the taste, all right? But um, if I love my missus the same way that I love Pepsi Max, then I'm in big trouble, eh? All right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so in ancient Greece, they made the concept of love much, um, much more concrete that by breaking it down into various categories. And they, come, they actually came up with seven different types of love. I think they used two, three or four in the New Testament. But the one they use in this, is, in this passage is agape love. And a lot of you will know what I mean when I use the word agape, right? What's agape love? Selfless love. It's Jesus love, right? So agape love, it's not just a feeling for someone, for someone else that, that happens to you. For Jesus, love is action, right? For Jesus, love benefits others. And love is sacrificial, it doesn't come with conditions. For Jesus, love is more than a feeling. It's a choice. And I really like that, you know. Sometimes we really got to choose to love people, eh? It's a choice that you make to seek the well-being of others, especially when they're doing it tough and they can't pay you, pay you back, even if they wanted to. You know that good feeling you get when someone just does something for you because they love you? It's good, eh? You know, they, they don't want anything back. They just want to bless you because they're awesome, all right? And you remember that type of person, don't you? And that, what the, those acts of kindness they do for you, you keep them like little gems in your heart. But um, what do you do with the people that don't love you? All right? Hmm. All right? It's easy to love the person that blesses you, right? But what about the people who I don't like? And there's a lot of people I don't like, all right? And there's a lot of people that don't like me. I can't imagine why. <laughs> right? But, you know, it happens. It's crazy. They're crazy. We pray for them, right? You know what I mean? <laughs> but um, <laughs> why, do we, why do we have to love people I don't like and who don't like me? That's right. And it reflects the character of God. It reflects the heart of Jesus, all right? That's sacrificial love. You know, it's the love that mirrors... The love of Jesus, the agape love, it doesn't come with conditions. 
It can be hard and it can be inconvenient and it can cost us. But you know what? Let us never forget that we were all enemies of God once and that he loved us. That God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. I love this. This is real love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and he sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. This is real love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and he sent his son to take away our sins as a sacrifice. So we know that um, we can't love God without loving people, but, so he, but here's the clincher. You can't love God the way, he, uh, the way he wants you to if you're not doing it the way he asks you to. So before he left, he left us with a job to do, right? His last command, our first priority. I love that, eh? Good job, boss. It's good. <laughs> Jesus is not telling us to go somewhere else and then make disciples. When you examine the language and the culture and the scripture, we've, okay, and you know what? We've been going through this as well in the internship for, for weeks, all right? And, and it's about um, the authority and the power that, that Jesus gives us to do our job to spread his message and make disciples, right? So more accurate, accurately, oh wait, I want to go here. So first, we got the Great Commission, right? The last, his last command, our first priority, and it is, so Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you, and be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So let's get the correct perspective on this, all right? And this is what we've been going through lately. Jesus is not telling us to go somewhere else and then make disciples, right? When you do look at the language and the culture and, and the rest of Scripture, we, we can read it a little bit more like this. There's been some bold added here, right? So Jesus is saying, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me and now I'm giving that authority to you, right? Therefore, while you are going about your normal life, make disciples of all people. Okay, A plus, done. <laughs> All right, so this is our last command. So the big picture is, and this is our correct perspective, right? You love God by loving people, and you love people by sharing Jesus with them and teaching them how to follow him. Brother, when you spoke to that dude in the car, lost his son, what did you give him? He had no hope in the world, did he? He gave him some hope, a glimmer in the darkness. One good thing when his whole rest of his life is out of chaos and darkness, right? And that's the best gift any of us can give anyone. I know that, all right? You love God by loving people and you love people by sharing Jesus with them and teaching them how to follow him. Jesus says, love me by bringing home as many of my lost children that you can. And he says, time's running out. Get it done before it's too late. Because they've got big problems out there, man. All right? And most of them don't even know it. Not knowing Jesus is the biggest problem that anyone is going to ever have. And whether or not you decide to follow Jesus is the most important decision you will ever make. It has eternal consequences. All right. So my descent into darkness started when I was 16. Well, like those boys we're hearing about. All right, my orientation was off and I cont continued to go. I hit rock bottom and I kept going for 20 years. All right? The last three or four years I spent before I came to Christ, I spent on the, on the footpath sleeping on concrete with a needle hanging out my arm. All right? Or I was in jail. I had no hope. I had no hope. I know what it's like to have no hope. I had abandoned all hope. I was the devil's plaything and he played me like a puppet. And he delighted in my suffering. He delighted in my torment. But when the love of God was revealed to me, I was never the same again. Right? And you, you know what I mean, right? You know what you've been, I know what I've been given. And you know what you've been given, right? That's right. What have we been given? Huh? Let's just have a think about this. So the king of heaven, he saw our desperate situation. 
And he came down into the filth and he said, I'll die for you. Right? The creator entered into creation and he said, I'll die so you can live. All right? And he let his creatures that he created beat him, and spit on him. He was humiliated. He was stripped naked. His flesh was torn from his bones. And they laughed at him. And they cursed at him. And then they hung him on a cross until he died. And he did that willingly. And he did it for us. And he said, Father, forgive them. They don't understand what they're doing. That's the love of God. That's the purest, most innocent, the most beautiful, and the most noble of any ever. <laughs> the absolute best of any of us died in the place of the guilty in our place so we can come to him and we say I didn't know then but I know now and I don't want to live for myself anymore I want to live for you but I need your help and he helps us right we put our faith in him for the redemption for the redemption of our souls and we're redeemed now and always that's a beautiful thing and you tell me what type of love is that? That's selfless. Hey, that's agape love. That's a prime example of agape love. The greatest display of love ever. And I can't imagine a day in my life when that love won't compel me. You know what I mean? Because I was in too deep, man. Too deep. And I couldn't imagine a way out ever. But he gave me one. Yeah, And it's available for anyone who puts their faith in it. No matter where you're at or what you've done. So God has loved me so much and he will continue to love me. And now I can't help but love him and do what he asked me to do. Huh? And that is the test of our love. It's our obedience. The test of our love is our willingness to submit and follow the commands of Jesus. And Jesus says it himself many, many times. He says, the ones that love me are the ones who obey my commands. All right? It's not the ones that know the right thing to do will obey my commands. It's the ones that love me, man. You know, when I love someone, I want to do, I want to, you know, what, 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 what they love, I start to love. What they appreciate, I learn to appreciate. Hey, can't always be take, take, take. Hey. It can't always be about me. It's got to be a two-way thing. It's going to be the proof. The test of our love is our obedience. What are we willing to give? What are we willing to sacrifice? And what are we willing to surrender? Am I willing to take, take a step of faith into the unknown? And am I willing to put myself in an uncomfortable situation so that, I, so that I can be Jesus to somebody? Like you were with that dude, man. You know, you turned the meter off. And you said, brother, I'm here. Let's talk. And you did. You know what I mean? That's noble, bro. And I know you didn't, you didn't do it for accolade. You did it because you loved Jesus and you wanted to share it, right? Yeah, that's right. You loved him. <sighs> you know, that's the greatest gift any of us can ever receive. And that's the greatest gift any, we can give anybody. That's an introduction to Jesus, right? So you love God by loving people and you love people by bringing them home to God. But you can, you can ask, how exactly do I do that, right? Well, you can start, get, start what, become an Uber driver? <laughs> One way? <laughs> One way, right? <laughs> but um, this, this brings me back to my, my reorientation, right? So I started a, um, I started a men's group at, at uh, New Heart Logan. Yeah, hey, the boys, some of the boys are here right now. Yeah. And... Um, so we, we started off by meeting up for a feed and we had a chat and we get, got into some scripture. And it was scripture that I thought was, um, you know, appropriate for the fellas. And then we all prayed for each other and we went home. Eh? We had a good time hanging out, right? Yeah, we did. All right. So about six, five or six weeks into it, Pastor Paul comes and he asks me how I'm going and he goes, am, am I sticking to the new heart, you know, the life group model? I said, nah, man, I'm not. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, was doing my, I was doing my own thing, you know what I mean? Because I thought I knew best, right? But, um, but the thing is, I underestimated these guys, you know? And 
But more than that, I'd underestimated what God can do when you give him the space to do it. When I, when I, when I give him the reins. I, I, you know, um, I learned my lesson now, okay? And um, it's a really cool thing. And it's the first time I've really applied it properly. And, it, and the fruit from it is amazing, bro. So if you, if you haven't checked it out, you go to our website. and So newheartbaptist.com and go to the top right and there's, of the website. And there's three lines. You click on that. Go down to resources. And then it's, and it's the, the discover things, right? Yeah, and then you go to discover life group. And you go through it, all right? And um, how am I going? All right, okay. Time, yeah. So, um, yeah, so what, what it is, it's real simple. And you would have, would have been familiar with it. So it's celebrate. And you ask, why do we celebrate? You know? You ask Isabel. And you, we celebrate because we put our focus where it's supposed to be, on God and what he's doing, right? And we give him, and we give him praise and we're, we're mindful. We're always getting our perspective right, Okay. And then, we got, and then you move on to discover. So you get into the scriptures. You speak about what, what, what you're getting from it, how we're going to apply it during the week. And then it's the prayer and care. Okay, make sure everybody's cool. All right. But the most, then the game changer is the, is the, is the last one, right? So it's to activate and mobilize. And that, that's where we work together to get into the Great Commission and do the Great Commission. And um, what do we do, boys? Once a month, we go out. What do we do now? Yeah, so we put on a we put yeah we put on a barbecue at Logan Gardens every every second Saturday of the month, okay, and that's, so that's one of the ways we, we activate. But through through the week as well, so we got that mindset right now, fellas. We're looking for opportunities. We say, mate, maybe I can talk to this dude, man. Look, he's he's a bit rough, and we start praying for people by name, right? And it's so very rewarding, and we're all growing from it as well. When we get skin in the game, uh, we get fitter, tougher, stronger. More able, right? That's right. But um, I want to tell you this before I wrap up. There's, there's, and this, this is really, like I said, all the boys are really impressing me. Eh? But there's this one, so we've been praying for people by name. And there was this one guy. Um, my mate works on the job site, right? That's rough as guts. There's been like all in brawls there on the, on the site. That's crazy. And no, no one got fired. But... Um, <laughs> We've been praying for this one guy and he's, you know, I don't need to tell you his name. He's been doing it real tough with a whole lot of things. But my bro, what he does, he goes to, he goes to work and all these rough dudes, bro, eh? And he sits, and my, my mate, he's just, you know, bro, he's a good boy, eh? He's, 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 he's been doing it tough, but for five months now, he's clean and sober. He's given his life to Jesus. He's met a pretty girl. He wants to do it the right way. You know what I mean? It's a beautiful thing, and he sit and he sit and he sits. He tells me he sits, so he doesn't swear, he doesn't do drugs, he doesn't drink none of that stuff anymore. Everyone else is doing that, he does it. And when he when he has lunch or smoke, he sits there and he tells me, "Sim, I sit there and I always pray over my food." And everyone looks at him, mm, "What are you doing, mate?" <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm praying. He goes, "I'm a Christian. I'm praying." And he goes, "Well, you don't look like a Christian, mate. You know what I mean? what, what's what's a Christian supposed to look like?" But um, so we pray for this dude. He's got this dude at work, and he says, "Bro, I." I one, that's one of the things we, we see. We, we look up for people throughout the week and we say, man, who needs Jesus? Who can we pray for and who can we invite into the kingdom, you know? Who can we partner with God? And that's a re- reorientation I had. It wasn't about what I'm, I was doing. It's about what God's doing in somebody's heart and how me and the boys can help facilitate that. Hey, so there's this one guy, we start praying for him and he's, he's, he's a train wreck. And one night he goes out... Oh, Lou Saz comes back, leaves the, leaves the site unlocked or something like that. The boss revs him and he's about to get fired. And this, can't, this guy can't afford to get fired. And my mate comes across the, the, the yard and he, and he comes up to him and everyone's heard and, you know, what's going on. He comes up and he goes, listen, brother, you know, you all right? And he's like, yeah, yeah. And he goes, you know what? Me and, me and my brothers, we've been praying for you, eh? And this guy, so <laughs> And just like that, this guy threw his, threw his arms around my bro and he starts crying like a baby in the middle of the job site. That's so cool, man, eh? And we continue to pray for him. And, we, and we've created a space, you know, we, we want to welcome him. Uh, whatever that, if that's life group, if that's the barbecue or whatever, you know. But yeah, so that's what I wanted to speak about. It's um, the three greats and getting our, the, our orientation focus, right? So um, it's it's a, it's a, it's an important thing, you know. And um, great things never came from comfort zones, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I want to um, 
that's me done for today. Thanks for being, it's been good being here again as well, all right? I want to pray for us, and then I'll hand it over to you, Brad, yeah? And you know what? I, was, I speak to Roger as well, and he's doing really good as well. He's ever been through the jungle, man. You've seen the footage of this crazy stuff. But he's told me a couple of months ago that um, you know, if you wake up every morning and you thank God for your salvation, you're always going to be on the right path. You're always going to be on the right trajectory. Because you remember where you come, where you're at, and what you've got to do while you're here, and where you're headed. 